Hi, for this video, what I want to do is show you how to find the critical value Z when you're using the rejection region decision rule and hypothesis testing. And we're going to use class calc to help us find that. Um, so for this one, we are using that alpha equals 0 0.08. And remember that the alpha level is basically what determines the rejection region and helps you to decide whether to reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis. So for a left tail test, the alternative hypothesis is going to be less than, it's pointing towards the left. Um, the tail of the test is always dependent on the alternative, not necessarily where the claim is. If the claim happens to be in the alternative, then it will determine the tail of the test. But no matter what, if the alternative is less than, then you are going to use a left tail test. So what we're going to do is we're gonna shade alpha this is going to be our rejection region. And so after we run whatever test we're running, if it's a Z test, we're trying to find the threshold for rejecting. If it falls in this shaded region, then we reject the null hypothesis. If it falls outside of the, re the shaded region, then we fail to reject. So depending upon your textbook, your critical value can be denoted as ZC, Z star, or Z naught. So those are all of the different symbols that I have seen in textbooks. You may have something different, but um, depending upon what your textbook author decides to use, this could change. Okay, they all mean the same thing. It's just your critical value for where we are going to reject or fail to reject. Okay, so what we are going to do is we are going to grab class calc and we're going to go into stat and the distribution plot. Since we are looking for a z-score, we are using the normal distribution. And remember that in the normal distribution, the standard, um, the mean and the standard deviation for the standard normal distribution is zero and one. So whenever you are looking for a z-score, you would use zero and one. And then what we are going to do is we want the inverse of that because we are looking for the z-score and um, not the area. So this time we're given the area and we're trying to find the z-score. So what I would do is I would just plug in my alpha level and this is the critical value. So negative 1.405. And the reason that I did three decimal places instead of just two, typically with z-scores we round to two decimal places, but whenever the third decimal place is a five or rounds to a five, it is best to list out three decimal places. If you are working with an online homework platform, it is possible that they tell you just to go ahead and round to two decimal places, so you can round it to negative 1.41, but it's honestly better if it's directly in the middle to leave it as three decimal places. So if I had a z-score of say negative 1.75, negative 1.75 would fall to the left of that, so I would end up rejecting the null hypothesis. If I ended up with a z-score of say negative 0 0.75, 0 0.75 does not fall in the rejection region, so I would fail to reject the null hypothesis. So that's how you use the rejection region to make your decision. Um, we're now gonna look at a right tail test. So in a right tail test, the alternative hypothesis will have the symbol greater than. So this time, we are going to shade the right tail and we are looking for the critical value. And I'm just going to use Z sub C. Like I said, you could use Z naught or Z star, depending upon your text. This time my alpha level is going to be in the right tail. So using class calc, we need the area to the left. So I would have to do one minus 0 0.08 as my area. Um, which ends up being 92% or 0.92. So you could either plug in one minus 0 0.08 or you can just plug in the 0.92. So if I delete that 0 0.08 um, and put in 0.92 instead, notice that it gives me the same thing, just a different sign. And that's because the area to the left and the area to the right with the same area, the z-scores are gonna be the same, just opposite signs. So our critical value for this one would be 1.405. Again, I would make sure to, if you're working with an online homework platform, to look and see what place they want you to round it to. 
Um, if it is directly in the middle, your third decimal place is a five. Again, I would keep it as three decimal places. And the last one that we want to look at is a two-tailed test. A two-tailed test happens when the alternative hypothesis is not equal to. So if I draw out my normal model to the best of my ability, I would shade both the left tail and the right tail. So this time we're going to have two critical values. It can either fall to the left of the negative z-score or to the right of the positive z-score in order to reject. And what's going to happen is our alpha is going to be split. So half of alpha would go here, so 0 0.04, and half of alpha would go here. And it doesn't matter which one that you find. I can either type in 0 0.04 to get the negative critical value, or I can type in 1 minus 0 0.04, which is 0 0.96, and that would give me the positive critical value. Typically, I just find the negative one because it's easier. So if I just go in here and I plug in 0 0.04, um, I get negative 1.75. And since the third decimal place on this one is a zero, I would just keep it to two decimal places. So I can say that my critical value is negative 1.75 and it would be positive 1.75. So if I ended up with a negative 1.9, I would reject. If I ended up with something like 1.1, 1.1 falls in between these two rejection regions, so I would fail to reject. And if I got something like 1.95, that would be up here in this rejection region, so I would also reject. So using the rejection region is a, an easy way to make a decision in a hypothesis test. It helps you to visually see where you are going to reject and where you are going to fail to reject. So hopefully this video was helpful in finding those critical values using class calc. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.